Hello and welcome to Edukimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the feature news for today, 14th of March 2022. Today's future news is on a very important topic, United Nations Environment Program Frontiers Report 2022. This report speaks of three important criteria of determining environment. Those factors which have been many times neglected. One of them is the presence of noise pollution. The second one is forest fires and third wildfires and the third one is the issue of phenology which deals with the diurnal or climatic variations which happen over seasonal times and their natural in nature and how the various species adapt to it right and this is largely induced because of or changing because of climate change we will understand each of them what united nations has to say we will derive possibly quite a few out of quite a few cases out of it and how united nations views these problems its impact and what are the solutions all three of it so three important themes getting covered through this feature news itself let's begin this but before that let me welcome all of you here hi amlan kriti bhabani ashish netra hima gopal kim vivek tiasha welcome niranjan welcome to you as well all right now that's that's the confusion that each of us have here which is the fire which is actually more than the other one human induced or the natural right so let's understand this we will possibly the debate debate might not get over with this conversation but then still we will get again a lot of insights into what this issue is about all right so let's begin with the, the first one that is noise pollution then we will cover forest fires and then the issue of phenology right we will explain each of them so let's start this before anything uh, this report is very dynamic if you see on the left these are the images they have presented and through images they have explained the issues and the good points of each of the uh, you know uh, things as well for example the issue of wildfires it has got a lot of positives because of which the world has only evolved till now there are a lot of things about phenology which have helped innumerable species survive as of now but 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 these times when wildfires have become human induced when phenology has become induced because of climate change this threatens the survival of many many species this is the problem that has come up lately so we will cover each of them first of all uh, the the 2022 report says noise pollution fire, wildfires and seasonal events all of them right these are the ones which are constituting some or the other level of threat to survival of various species around the world this is the first point that they mention right and then there are various solutions but we will not cover the solutions immediately so the covering the sound pollution they say sound are the complex physical phenomena this is the machine wala definition from uh, three idiots sound are the complex phenomena originating in the vibrations from a source that propagates energy into medium 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 as an acoustic wave do we have to remember this definition not at all you don't have to ever de remember a definition like this right all you got to know is that sound is th there is no place without any sound there is always a vibration it may be very very less but just like 0 kelvin or minus 273 degree celsius is an ident ideal temperature can never exist similarly no silence no silence is not possible at all there may be very very small level of sound and there is nothing called as a uh, positive or negative sound this is all dependent on the context in which sound has been perceived right so this is a mixture of uh the positive and negative whatever we call it and that is called as soundscape soundscape just like landscape we have a soundscape mixture of the sound that we like and we do not like right noise and sound so all of them together is called as soundscape right this is what the report also has mentioned very clearly right what are the various sources of you know the pollution or the sound that we do not like around us roads railways airport industry high noise can also be from domestic and leisure activities somebody is listening music at loud voice somebody is fighting at uh, you know their home spaces in a very very loud tone so this is how the sound is calculated it is calculated the intensity of sound is calculated through decibels right so 0 decibel is the least sound and then we have uh, going up to say 150 180 decibels this is not tolerable for humans at all what is sustainably tolerable tolerable to us is around 60 decibels if you hear 80 decibels at a sustained levels it will lead to damage or permanent damage to ears if i whisper if i whisper to you 
if you can hear that this was 30 decibels the normal sound that we speak at is 60 decibels right now i might be speaking to you at maybe 65 decibels force right if there's a motor vehicle passing around you that could be 80 decibel of sound if there's an aircraft moving around you that could be 110 decibels right so this is how uh, the intensity of the sound is measured around us all right so see breathing the ideal breathing is at 10 decibels we wouldn't even come to know if we are not near the person 30 20 decibel rustling of leaves the you know leaves with wind they move rustling of leaves whisper is 30 decibels oh by the way could you hear me hi puja welcome right and then re refrigerator sound that is 40 decibels right 50 decibel is moving off the uh, that is the moderate rainfall right 70 decibel is a car movement and 110 to 20, 20 decibel is the movement of police vehicle and then we have fighter aircraft moving fireworks 140 and these are unsustainable at all right this helps in understanding the intensity of the sound that is hurting us so if the sound is part 10 uh, every decibel every increase in decibel here causes 10 to the power x rise in the intensity that which is which is affecting us 10 times level of increase for example uh, breathing is 10 to the power 1 because 1 decibel uh, 10 decibels if it is 30 decibel it will be 10 to the power 3 3 times 3 zeros 2 zeros more added here similarly the impact of a car moving at 70 decibel will be 10 to the power 7 to our ears this is how the impact magnifies to our ear right what is conducive is 60 70 decibels but 80 decibel onwards sustained listening is going to create problems but then ironically in urban areas many of the soundscapes we are subjected to continuous uh, noise uh, around us right the report itself says there's a part of the report drowned out by the noise creatures of the city not only human beings the birds and other creatures they're also impacted by this sound and because of this sound they're not even able to communicate to the other birds other species right and because of this they choose a different time to mate there is they choose a different time to communicate also mate is different but communicate also they start communicating early mornings the early bird hour. that's true the report itself says acoustic communication is vital for many animal species while abrupt and unpredictable sounds may be perceived as threat by animals chronic acoustics that means continuously uh, these kind of sound disturbs such as traffic can interfere with acoustics of communication and alter behaviors in a range of species have you seen uh, the uh, dogs behaving erratically during diwali seasons absolutely so this is the reason abandoning noisy sites this is one thing that you can see in european cities robins the bird robins they seem to sing more at night to avoid high acoustic interference see the interference that they the, the, the land the soundscape is causing this is the reason that they wouldn't sing during normal hour they have changed their hours of singing only see united nation report itself uh, bogota Colombia, uh, sparrows start the dawn chorus early in the morning at a site with heavy daytime traffic there are places in Colombia where the sparrows start chirping early in the morning their chorus uh, knowing that there would be a lot of traffic in some time so what beautiful uh, changes that they have been able to make but this is only the elasticity the natural elasticity of ecology it is it is it goes to a limit and after that it becomes plastic it becomes breakable right so uh, i have given you a couple of examples from uh, how the creatures have adapted themselves to the changing soundscape right in urban areas but look at the examples new york more examples right two now new york barcelona ho chi minh city in vietnam hong kong bogota toronto all these places even when they are developed places they all face the issue of noise pollution just uh, a few months back i had covered an article on uh, light pollution as well light pollution light pollution impacting the movement of migratory birds in the area of high rises in downtown new york because of uh, because of light pollution they would not get they would get get distracted and because of high towers being glassy in nature they would not be able to navigate at the right places and they would collide into they would also move with a high speed they would collide into these high towers and after that they would only uh, succumb to injuries right thousands of these uh, uh, 
uh, birds they were rescued but then i don't know what happened to them later this happened in new york right many of the uh, the mass nesting aribada sites where uh, the turtles come to hatch in uh, well, in in odisha coast they get misnavigated because of light pollution right so similarly when we consider a pollution what we understand is air pollution for humans but then light pollution also impacts and then we have noise pollution also getting you know uh, sharing its impact these are the smaller and finer things in life which uh, we do not understand at the right times but then uh, they are impacting us as well there are a lot of deaths that happen the heart rate changes of humans because of noise pollution right and this is what the study has shown or various other places also around the whole world right just presenting the example of developed places so that you understand what is happening in south asia see this is the level to which south asia goes the impact of noise pollution can go up to 120 decibels try living near uh, an airport right i was staying near an airport earlier two times in pune and in um, dwarka in delhi both the places and if you are near uh, uh, an air base then you had it your sleeps the air sorties would let you ensure that you are woken up all the time so and please note one thing it is not only the sound intensity the decibel levels being high it is also about its frequency even if it is low but it is frequent it will not let you sleep it is not only about the frequency it is also about the pitch the temporal patterns does it happen during sleeping hours or does it happen at frequent times what is the pitch right so these are this will what will this is something that will give depth to your uh, uh, you know the answers that you write it is not just the intensity it is also uh, the frequency the pitch the temporal patterns of sound or any pollution that is happening right they are also impactful so you cannot only mention that delhi goes through a high level of particulate matter pollution this is not happening throughout the whole year this happens maximum for around say 1 1 and 1/2 months rest of the time the particulate matter pollution is not as high not alarming right so the the intensity is material along with that the frequency is material along with that the uh, temporal pattern is material along with that the uh, pitch is material this is for sound that i am speaking right the pitch all right so the the difference between the pitch and loudness is this that you know if i have a low pitch right now i am speaking in a low pitch low pitch also can have loudness i speak loudly right this is loud but the pitch is low but then if lata mangeshwar would do this this would be high pitch and loud again i speak loudly this is the difference right so uh, all of this will get depth to your answer this example would give depth to your answer but then if you see so much of noise pollution what is the way out this is the way out hi shubham good evening to you welcome and good evening so what is the solution to it there are multi pronged solutions that have been given that uh, would provide a smart solution to a city to a, to the urban life if you remember we had covered one uh, um, one case of urban sponge i hope you remember that example urban sponge cities in uh, uh, cities in uh, chennai smaller uh, business districts in chennai singapore delhi being created on the uh, on the on, on the examples of urban sponge uh, uh, urban sponge right those places which can absorb excess water can deposit excess water or maybe uh, water recharge facilities would exist and then they would utilize it during tough times similarly there can be soundscape which can absorb these kind of sound pollution what are they tree belts simple example tree can also absorb these kind of sound tree belt is a good example green roof the green roof will not only help in reflecting the sunlight it will also absorb these kind of sound similarly vegetation noise barriers if we have bridges just cover them with some green cover this will also help so when you see if you have seen this the metro pillars they are covered with flower pots so flower pots can help you in not only cleaning the atmosphere but also in reducing the sound pollution see the examples these are the soundscapes that we are talking of these are the smart soundscapes that we are speaking of right pathway interventions electric vehicles uses itself will decrease the sound of the conventional vehicles no the the uh, ga the gas based vehicles or petrol or diesel based vehicles they have sound but if a tata nexon is driving aside or electric bike is riding aside you no sound at all so these are the green solutions that we are speaking of right 
mitigation at source also. If there is a source tunnel and it has been covered, there is a mitigation at source. So, these are the smarter solutions, some of the solutions that can be utilized. All right. We need our cities to be orally, audio, in audio perspective, diverse and inclusive to support mixed usage. This is something silence alone cannot deliver. All right. And then you also must look at what are the vulnerable groups and how to reduce down this pollution. Reducing down, we covered in some ways, but vulnerable groups, the elders, small children, vulnerable animals who cannot speak, these are the vulnerable groups, more vulnerable groups, right? So this is the first part of the report. I, these are the screenshots of the report itself that I have picked up. All right. Shubham says, sir, can you explain in Hindi? Shubham, I would love to explain some parts in Hindi. However, however, there are objections from many of us saying English is the language that we use standard, you know, in a standard way here. That is the reason I restrict myself in English. But if there is a part I can explain to you, I would definitely love to explain in Hindi. Right? This is sound pollution. Hai, dhvani pradushan ki baat ho rahi hai. Aur dhvani pradushan ke bohat sare karan hai. And uh, some of the reasons that we studied right now are, uh, you know, urban in causes. And they have a lot of impacts on uh, various stakeholders, ecosystem. Babani says, I speak loudly and decrease the volume. No, that was not the natural tone. It was to make you understand what is high decibel. Okay, okay. China sponsity. Yeah, India also has got these kind of sponsities. Uh, Netra, good one. Yeah, good. Very good. I have seen a lot of, uh, a lot of humongous. I think this is to the tunes of multiples of 100% that I am seeing. The kind of, you know, uh, impact I have seen on your um, effort, Netra. And other people as well. I am I'm spotting Netra right now because I have seen this happen with the kind of examples and the perfect, uh, you know, um, uh, words, phrases and uh, uh, data that she gives. That's where I want to warn you a little. Don't give me a perfect 107 degrees temperature. No, tell me say 100, and 100 plus degrees Celsius like that. This will help you reduce the expenditure in bytes in the mind and also not make you nerved if you don't remember that data, right? So moving to the second one. Shubham, I am there with you, but please bear with us. We have gone through this quite a few times where I use a couple of Hindi phrases and people ask me to convert the language, right? So thank you, Shubham. Uh, waves of extreme wildfires. Can you imagine this image that I have picked up right now? This is the real image of the ground level fire that has happened. These are happening in boreal forest in Russia. Not right now. These were in, I think, 2012 fires that happened. And, and that's the reason I have picked up this, this image is because if you can see a small part here, this distance is 50 kilometers. This distance is 50 kilometers. And you can imagine the kind of fires that have spread. The red colored are the fire and what is seen in white is the smoke. And what is seen at the ground level are the boreal forest. These are the... Uh, alpine forests that exist in um, taiga region i hope you understand what i am speaking of these are the places where uh, uh, the leaves the leaves can spark against each other there is less presence of water and they can cause fires these are the fires that have occurred in russia but these fires have occurred in australia as well many places in europe many places in peru chile around the whole world india every year we have forest uh, Fires as well, Uttarakhand, not east, right? So waves of extreme wildfires and you people rightly mentioned while some of the fires are created because of human induction, human induced changes in the climate, direct or indirect, why, on the other hand, many fires are natural progression also. This is a part in which just like if you remember, Pure, we had covered in the, uh, you know, uh, flood, uh, we had covered one of the feature news on flood. And I had explained that this flood is a very natural progression. It is a natural yearly progression in which flood renews the whole place, right? Through water. If just a just a flood washes out all the dirt from, from surrounding areas. Similarly, waves of wildfires are a way of natural progression. They help in germination of seeds, they help in transplanting of uh, various plants. They also help in blossoming of flowers. You don't trust me? I will show this to you. Have a look. 
fire dependent plants in fire prone ecosystems many plant species depend on recurring fires in their life cycle they depend on recurring fire cycles fire, fire cycles in uh, in the life cycles fire triggers flowering seed dispersals or seed germination as looking at one of these points you people have not put right so see some species common to boreal forest and mediterranean climate forest store seeds in cones for years until a fire even triggers their release bhai 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 this is your example this is your example that fire is necessary but only natural fire is necessary only limited extent fire is necessary right wild fire even stimulates flowering of uh, in bulb producing plants right bulb producing plants onion type of plants some of them flower because of these time smoke and charred wood can also induce seed germination in many species in shrublands right so they are they see the problem is this that there are many places where fire used to occur in limited ways now it has expanded and there are places where fire used to happen at a good scale and that has only reduced all because of the late, uh, these late 1 150 200 years of human survival right so let's understand that part quickly all right see the the uh, the one excerpt of this uh, report says the observed trends towards more dangerous weather conditions for wildfires are projected to continue increasing so the projection is that the wildfires will continue to increase due to due to mounting greenhouse gas concentrations with escalating risk factors so not only greenhouse gas you know presence because what does greenhouse gas do causes global warming so global warming is one induction one reason right now this is happening because anthropogenic reasons i understand it anthropogenic factors but along with that they are escalating risk factors also for example the presence of rainfall humidity only if you know we are using nat lawn mowers you understand lawn mowers no those um those uh, machines that we use to clear the grass if we use them at uh, normal you know day times when this is hot climate that is the time when you would see sparks rising of it it could result into natural uh, forest fire so what to do we have to use lawn mowers during early hours or later evening hours when the climate when the weather is cool enough right so this is escalating risk factor don't drive your vehicle on uh, uh, the natural landscape for example the uh, uh these places with grasslands see there are grasslands which are prone to fires that is fine in summers this is the reason that savanna has huge grasslands and uh, lesser trees right savannas but other grasslands are not prone to this so we have to be more careful i will come to the reasons for human okay let me share that to you all with you already let me share that to you with you see some of the reasons of these forest fire could be man made and certain of could be uh, natural right let me show this to you see so brazilian savannas i am giving you example from around the world so that you understand what are the various factors all right so amlan says not only flowers but bamboo as well they also germinate with the help of uh, the forest fires all right great all right so you looking looking at brazil it says that this is the second largest biome after after amazon rainforest increased frequency and con concentration of dry season dry season here is more and uh, because of this uh, there are forest fires seen in 2004 7 10 2012 15 and 17 so dry conditions what are we talking of brazil savannas all right not the rainforest but the savannas right russia and siberia this is because of uh, uh, low surface moisture and lack of rainfall in the previous year 2012 13 right and elevated temperatures in early 2003 also so this is one place amazon uh, i'm i'm speaking of russia boreal forest in taiga region so this is a savanna grassland where increased forest fire have been happening because of because of higher uh, dry, higher uh, dry season right presence of dry season second one is happening because of lack of rainfall tiger region already less rainfall even more less rainfall is happening here similarly if you see bolivia bolivia so when you people mention the impact of el nino and la nina bolivia faces the impact of that drought and forest loss forest loss is one more criteria for forest fires right similarly uh, in paraguay in south america it is associated with deforestation 
See, so you see that one place is a dry season, there another place which says lesser moisture and less precipitation, another place deforestation, another place drought, multiple factors, all of them being played because of human interventions in natural ecosystems, right? So, natural ecosystems have naturally maintained it, but then this is human intervention which is causing this kind of changes, right? Ha, ah, there are many other natural reasons also, for example, lightning. So, Canada, a record number of climate driven lightning ignitions, a climate driven, hai. so either it is getting impacted through human interventions, only a supercomputer will tell. If human have impacted this uh, lightning ignitions, what has been the climate, microclimate changes there, but then Canada, lightning ignitions, right? Similarly, mega droughts in other places like Chile, mega drought. Angola, because of uh, uh, felling of forest for development, Angola, right, central and south of Africa. Then we have uh, uh, many places in Australia, right, mega fires happening in these areas because of uh, thunderstorms and, and, and lightning, right. So these are some of the many factors I included from the report, right. But look at the fact. Wildfires are natural feature to the earth ecosystem. I have said this to you. They are natural. However, they are they are necessary for the functioning of many ecosystems. However, human induced are the ones which are creating a change in the complete ecosystem. So, dry climate, lightning, climate variability, volcanic eruptions, all of them are impacting. They have always impacted and they have helped in the ecosystem growth as well. Complete ecosystem has evolved because of floods, because of forest fires, but then there are changes happening to this also. We will study that changes also. But then uh, these are the natural factors. What are the human factors? Human factors could be generating of sparks. Sparks because of non-movers, chainsaw, grinders, slash and burn, northeast of India, right? Coal seams, coal beds, these are the places where there is coal seam burning all the time, causing, you know, subsoil forest uh, fires. I will show that to you. Overhead power lines, removal of timber, that is, that is cutting off trees. These are the causes, human induced causes. Wildfires play a key role in maintaining ecological functions. They trigger germination, burning of competition, vegetation also. Competition, vegetation, they can burn off them also, right? Okay, see, naturally when three elements combine, ignition, fuel, that is air and the weather, if it is dry. So dry weather along with presence of uh, fuel flammable material and ignition and one quick uh, uh, update to, to you here the year covid started 2020, 2020 we saw a lot of fires happening in many many uh, forested areas right uttarakhand himachal pradesh arunachal pradesh mizoram many of the fires happened at these places they were primarily because of a couple of reasons see the forest department it goes to the forested areas and it clears out the rusted and, and the rusty leaves, the dried leaves and once they are not able to maintain those areas because of what? Because of the COVID lockdown, it happened during summers only, no? The lockdown happened in what season? Please get back, yes. Thank you for listening. See, they heard it. The Look at the, look at the acoustics of this place. The machines also hear what I am saying, artificial intelligence. So, uh, if you look at uh, those places, they uh, they could not maintain, the people could not maintain the uh, natural, uh, you know, regulation of the natural ecosystem there and because of this, the dried leaves, they caught fire, right? So, this is one thing that caused increased number of uh, fires in COVID times, right? Types of wildfires, Amlan, here is your reply, here is your reply, you asked, how can volcanoes cause fires, right? So, if you've seen uh, uh, some movies on volcanoes, wherever the volcano is spread, it is, it is molten magma, it is high in temperature, 3000 degrees Celsius of temperature, wherever they move, they melt everything. And even surrounding areas where there is a lot of silica and nitrogen dioxide, carbon dioxide present, it only helps in creating the effect of fire, the conditions required for fire. What are the conditions required? Have a look. Ignition, fuel, weather, all of them aid. Volcano aids ignition, volcano aids fuel and weather. The, the sparkling, you know, uh, chingari that comes out of uh, uh, the volcano, they are the ones which help in spreading of the fire. And they are of quite a few kinds. Surface fire, canopy fire, and the third one being crown, uh, uh, ground fires. 
crown fires crown fires are the canopy fires they spread from one crown tropical rain forest in those areas to other uh, forest uh, to other other uh, you know other trees crown fires so you see crown fires happening here can you see the in the image here tree covers you know spreading fires from one to the other right on the other hand surface fires are the one which happen on the ground level right ground level and then ground fires are the are the ones that keep on simmering at the ground level so when we have molten magma magma not lava magma within the earth uh, crust they also can stimulate some level of ground fires and many ground fires are supposed to be active in places where there are coal beds and coal seams good example is that of dhanbad dhanbad a place in uh, jharkhand very very coal capital of india right the black diamond and uh, this is where you would see a lot of ground ground fires happening how is it what is the proof the temperature of this place is say above 5 degree celsius celsius of the usual temperatures of the soil see ground fires and it does not and it enables no vegetation vegetal cover or no um, uh, you know even crop cultivation at a place like that ground fires okay i have told you fire dependent plants remember this this is a good this is not something that people will be able to present they will only usually people will talk about the ill effect of fire and that's where i ask you to look at the good effect of fire if you remember i had spoken i had asked to you about the the good effect of global warming also i had asked and a couple of you had said that i am not able to think but there are good effects for example it enables carbon fertilization right many other ways in which global warming can also aid the ecosystem all right see this is the complete map of the world and it talks about the intensity of fire spread happening in savanna area you can see india and then southeast asia places in amazon rainforest and savanna and you can also see venezuela and north of uh, south america the complete region of mexico and some parts of southern usa parts of europe uh, russia northern parts of australia southeast asia and india and then east of uh, china these are the areas getting impacted majorly because of the forest fires around the whole world reasons now you know but see the impact has been very different at many places many places hi smriti you are from dhanbad okay great to know great to know then you would have felt all what i am speaking of maybe you can share your experience uh, on the chat shubham says sir i think the download link of pdf is wrong can you please share the exact link i can't download the pdf from the link shared yes shubham shubham what you can do is that uh, okay even naranjan is from dhanbad okay so uh, shubham you can go to edukme's website if you can do that uh, we'll get that changed uh, i'm not sure what the uh, you know link is provided there but then right now if you want the right now if you want the uh, pdf you can go to edukme resources section current affairs just go to daily gazette and type in your you know login detail just a phone number a message will come to you and after that you can download the gazette right from this corner all right all right moving uh, back to where we were moving back yes this part see there are some places which have gained this will help you man, at many places in social understanding in um, geography at many other places there are places where we had infrequent fires for example tropical rainforest these are the places where forests were less because of increased rainfall even if temperature is hot there will be rainfall and therefore the you know amazon rainforest are the best example but if you keep cutting the forest if you keep making the area plain there is a possibility of high fires happening frequent surface fires because of switching to flammable grassland or agricultural fields right so zoom cultivation shifting cultivation happening and increased fires in tropical rainforest areas there are places in savannas where frequent fires used to happen earlier and reduced fires have happened because uh, reduced fires due to heavy grazing heavy grazing in savanna and the fires have reduced because there is no element which could catch fire see the irony where there was less fire their fires have increased tropical rainforest and savannas fires were more earlier i told you about the natural ecosystem of savanna 
right that is why trees are less here but then fires have increased very very important changes have happened you must note this down similarly there are places where exotic species invasive species of grasses have come and they are causing increased fire what to do kya kare right human movement globalization has caused this so mid latitude deserts infrequent fires right following wet period this was the pre industrial times but frequent fires because of alien flammable grasses okay this is mid latitude deserts where forest fires were less earlier cacti was more but now right now uh, more fires have happened because of inflammable grass which is exotic in variety right so is it good absolutely yeah you people are knowing very striking things about this boreal forest infrequent fires earlier crown fires only right causing replacement of entire forest stand this used to happen previously but now high intensity fires have, are happening there earlier only crown fires was happening replacing the whole forest existence but now high intensity wildfires because of uh, loss of soil carbon switch to treeless vegetation treeless vegetation now this is what is happening in boreal areas right so taiga region and mid latitude northern america frequent low intensity fires earlier and now high density of juvenile infrequent high intensity crown fires more fires happening there right so you can see how the fires have impacted the uh, various ecosystems rainforest what has happened increase number of fires yes tropical savannas decrease because of lesser grass availability mid latitude desert increase because of presence of exotic varieties mid latitude other impacts boreal high intensity fires all right what can we do one of the good examples that can be given is that of breaks fire breaks this is a fire break you have forest on both the sides and this is like a 6 meter 8 meter break you have cut the forest so that fire may not spread from one place from one crown to the other from one part of the you know uh, ground fires to the other part of the ground fire this is a good example dispose mindfully do not if you smoke do not throw the smoke anywhere here if you go for camping camp responsibly do not cook anywhere ensure that you um, get that you you know uh, if you lit something there you exhaust it as well right lawn movers use them early in the day vehicles keep them off the grass see this is how you can ensure that the fire does not spread in this area right so these are could some updates about fires but we move to the next part that is the phenology we have covered two of them already welcome shubham ha ha i will sure i will show this to you Amlan, which part are you asking me to zoom at? This one. See, have a look. This is important. These are some things that these are some gold and diamonds that we derive out of our discussions, which are really, really important. Not something that everybody would know about all this. The changing ecosystem. This is what will score you the extra couple of marks, and you know maybe five, seven questions. maybe even four questions in one paper every paper four questions of this sort the examiner will know you have something different kuch to hai there is something in you nobody knows what it is but kuch to hai right and what does it impact lead to it leads to atmospheric pollution absolutely true greenhouse gases carbon sink the forest fires or the surface of the uh, uh, this the soil that was a carbon sink that turns to carbon source because that is burning see the impact similarly changing albedo those places which could reflect the green canopy cover which could reflect now it is only absorbing it the white cover of of snow which could reflect the sunlight it is only absorbing it so look at the kind of effect it causes water pollution erosion biodiversity ocean fertilization what is fertilization ocean fertilization of ocean is you know the presence of these micro level nutrients nitrogen dioxide sulfur carbon all of them yeah they they uh, you know they are moving around in the air and once they go to the ocean they form as feed stock for many plant species to grow over them so this is called as ocean fertilization large in, intense wildfires release enormous amounts of aerosols including bioessentials trace metals such as iron atmospheric transport of iron rich aerosols from these places cause algal blooms algal blooms and many species have gotten lost because of this kind of forest uh, uh, altered fire regime see savannas grassland rocky area shrubland forest wetland all of them got an impact of this right 
explained you this. Let's move to the third part that is phenology. Phenology is the natural changes that happen in, in, in a surrounding atmosphere. These are cyclical in nature. Diurnal change, day and night is itself phenology, right? It's logy, study, pheno, phenomena, right? Natural. So study all those natural changes which happen in a circular manner is phenology. It could be temperature of the day, it could be climate of the day, it could be wind. This could be something which is happening around uh, in a yearly cycle, in a monthly cycle or a daily cycle, right? And how the different species behave, that is important, right? So many species, they flower at a specific season, right? The season of springs, they flower. Right, there is an autumn season in temperate areas where they shed their uh, leaves. Similarly, uh, there, there's a time when the birds they migrate from one place to another. It is only during cold season, and that is the reason when that is the time when they also sometimes lay eggs, they hibernate some animals like polar bears, breeding, spawning, migration, hatching, reproduction. Similarly, the growing season, each of them are dependent on what is the climate about. Phenology, that is what it is, the cycl cyclical changes. Many European birds, they migrate according to the climates. And that has also changed with time. I will show you some examples. See, white stork is a bird, right? This bird lays eggs during certain season only, when it is more conducive to it. But look at what is happening to it. See, one thing is that it has to fetch food for its younger ones. It has to fetch food for its younger ones. But the case is that these over these birds overwinter throughout Africa. That means they spend their winter in Africa. All right, very very easy to understand why. Because during winters, if they are from those places where there is a lot of cold climate, they migrate to other places like Africa. Fine, agreed upon. But then when they migrate to these places, they 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 want to arrive a little early. It says they ad they adapt their migratory timing to advance their arrival. Why? So that they can feed their smaller babies there. If they early, if they arrive early, they are the early birds, and because of this, they'll be able to feed their early ones as early as possible. Right? So advance arrival at breeding grounds in different parts of Europe and nest early to avoid mismatch with food supply. But but early breeding exposes hatchlings to unfavorable conditions. See, they used to arrive. At the right time, they change their time so that they could give them some extra food. But when the small babies arrive, extreme, you know, weather like wind conditions, like heavy rainfall, this does not help the survival of their small uh, offsprings. This is a good example for you, my friends. Right? Stork. We have painted white stalks in, uh, in around India as well. Monarch butterfly, they all migrate for a while. Monarch butterflies, these butterflies, they, they, are renowned for 40, 300 kilometer journey, right, from America to other places, right, in central Mexico. And because of these changes in temperature, they have not been able to judge when they have to start their migration. It has gotten delayed. They want to migrate during the optimal temperature, cooler temperature, but then because of the warming, global warming, they their migration has gotten delayed. Six day per decade is what is their delay in migration. Have you seen November's not getting as cold, December not getting as cold, January and February getting a little colder, right? Similarly, the summers have also gotten delayed and this is the reason monarch butterflies are not, uh, are just adjusting to it. Sea turtles, sea turtles, now this is not only temperature, this is, this is also climate, this is also, uh, you know, the presence of light. The, by the way, sea turtle example is that of temperature itself. There is a temperature range above which if it goes, there is a tendency for the turtles to hatch uh, female children. Female turtles will be born if the temperature of the incubation or the sand at, at the mass net nesting sites or other sites, this is above a certain range. So high temperature, female offsprings and low temperature, male offsprings. If it rains at that places, the temperature will go low, it will result in no male offspring. This has been scientifically proved. Sea turtles. Similarly, baleen whales, many whales migrate to those places where there are spawning grounds, where they find their prey, their fish base, right? Where they, what they can eat upon. And when they migrate to those places, if you know some places, for example, uh, I'm speaking of that particular area between USA and Canada. Can you name that particular place? It is known for uh, 
um, the breeding grounds, the mixing of cold and and warm water currents. If you can name that place, please put them down in, in the comment section. That is the place where they move around to. But then because of changing climate, because of changing uh, temperatures of the uh, of the um, uh, of the of the stream of the Gulf Stream and um, the changing rate of the uh, ice melt, the spawning here at those specific places that we spoke of that is not happening at the right time because of the mixing of water, the upwelling and mix, uh, you know uh, downwelling, upwelling, um, downwelling mixing of the water is not happening at the right time because of which spawning is not happening and this is leading to a differentiated timing of the migration of baleen whales. See this? Yeah. So, they, these are the number of examples that the report itself has highlighted. Right? Very good example. Newfoundland. Thank you, Vivek, Amlan. Very good. Newfoundland. Alright. So, this is the UNEP Annual Frontiers Report providing insight. I was loving to know that these are the beautiful insights that they have provided. Imagine. Now, start. If you can do this personal exercise, please do this. Go to UPSC website. I have shown this to you enormous times. And start looking at the questions from paper 1 and paper 3 that could be answered from this. From what you have learned today only. Just today. And you will see that at least 5 questions will get served. At least 5 questions will get served from uh, paper 1 geography, paper, uh, paper 3 environment, disaster management, uh, uh, biodiversity. All of them will get served through this. Even components of governance can get served through this. Right. So this is the report. We have summarized the report here. All the three components here. Sources of noise pollution and calculated in decibels. Impact of it. The solution of it that we have presented. I have shared each of you. Each of it with you. Environmental acoustics. Urban soundscapes. Remember that keyword. Soundscapes. Just like landscape we have soundscapes. There are health benefits of it. And no sound is negative or positive. It's just the creation of the soundscape which can turn it into both of it. Right? Then wildfire, what are they? Free burning vegetation fire, maliciously caused or accidentally caused or naturally, each of this, right? People have natural, uh, uh, these forest fires done because of malicious intent, because of mistakes, because of natural ways also. So there is a fire regime which is natural. I showed that to you. Savanna ecosystems, boreal ecosystems. But then the whole regime has changed because of the human intervention, right? The burn extent, intensity, severity, seasonality. See, if you remember in sound also we spoke now, it is not only loudness, it is also its frequency. It is also its uh, quality of timber. It is also its pitch, right? All of them. Similarly, please use this. This, this makes the examiner wonder and wonder that this person, this Amlan has really got something in them. Yeah. This, they have really got something. I must give them the marks because they deserve to be here. Right? They deserve to be in IAS. You have to look at it at each of these articles from that perspective. What can you do extra? And that is what and that is what I also learned to do. Right? I start to relate with you people from usual life so that you can remember it very well. So I never want your time to get wasted. Right? Wildfire and ecosystem triggers germination. All of them presented here. Right? Three types of wildfires: crown fire, surface fire, ground fire. I hope you can remember all of them. Crown fires, surface fires, ground fires, right? The causes, the impact, atmospheric pollution, changing albedo, sink into carbon source, water pollution, erosion, ocean fertilization, biodiversity loss, all of it. Wildlife management, what can be done? Local knowledge, helping, repository, oh, all that. Phenomenology, I am sorry. Phenomenology, nahi. Pheno phenology. Phenomenology is one of my topics of research in philosophy. This is phenology. Phenology. Phenology is about the it is about the life cycle changes driven by environmental forces, interacting species, and how they respond to it. Right? When you saw the whales, they would interact with the environment and know when to migrate. Now they are getting confused. Even turtles would know when to migrate. Even the uh, uh, the butterflies, the uh, they, they are not the crown butterflies. They are the what, what are the species of butterfly? Anybody if you remember? Those butterflies would know when to migrate. And so would other species of uh, birds, migratory birds. But then now they are also getting confused because of the changing times. Impact of changing phenological changes. 
right you have five six exa examples with you right the steps to reduce or you know uh, mitigate this impact why they are related to they are related to climate change keystone species they are related to human movement right or uh, invasive species creation of habitat corridors enable plant colonization at specific places great yeah so this is how we covered today's feature news right what did we study we studied the uh, UNEP's Environment Programs Frontiers Report 2022. What a beautiful report. 60 page report talks about three aspects. One is forest fires, the other one is uh, phenology, and the third one is noise pollution. Noise pollution impacts, causes, and what are the remedial factors, especially in urban landscape right soundscape remember that decibels the second one is forest fires causes natural human made and human made intentional or accidental what is the impact and what is the natural cycle forest of, of, of forest fires right ecosystem and how it has impacted during these times just turning over of the complete natural system the third one is phenology the natural way in which all these five species they would move and then what has been in the impact of changing of phenology right we studied each of them we also studied the overall impact and who has been responsible human and nature both of them nature responsibility has been taken care of because it is a part of the ecosystem part of biotech growth but then if human intervention has been out of its scope it has led to impacts right so this is the reason UNEP in one program has produced this report right if you could look at uh, uh, a question from this perspective the question would be analyze the analyze the frontiers report UNEP 2022 just that much analyze the report so three components to be studied and maybe if it is a two page answer give one third two third of a page how much it would be yeah two third of a page to one part one part right this is how you would complete this answer in two pages, right? If you like this initiative, share some love, put likes, content, likes, shares, and and then share some love, right? Yes, North Atlantic Drift and Labrador Current. Thank you, and then yeah, good to see you people updated with all this basic geography. If you have not asked this question, if I pose a question you don't know, ask it again. Ashish Hima Netra Munark Butterfly. Thank you. Newfoundland was discovered by Vikings. How many years back? 1000 years back. So it looks like you people have seen that series also, Vikings. Let me show this to you. Monarch butterfly, white stalks, sea turtles, baleen whales, and then we have the European migratory birds. All right. These are the five species that we discussed today. Okay. So thank you for participation. If you like this initiative, share some love. I will see you guys tomorrow evening. See. I remember there was a time when you would say, Sir, Sir, Saturday ka wo current affairs kyo nahi ho hai? And now you see, since we, since we cover so many articles and they are such relevant, right? International relations, security, disaster management, environment, geography, culture, right? Polity, governance. There's so many things that we cover from ethics, right? So everything is covered in totality in one way or the other. So point is, you people must note it down and keep revising, right? That's what that's what a secure UPSC student would do. Keep on studying what you're studying, but then if you spend this time here with me, keep on revising. You don't know anything, just glance at the newspaper, ask this question right here. If we are not able to serve, then you have a right to further, you know, go ahead somewhere, look at some other places. But don't spend other time, spend time with us. Note down, remember this. And this will become become your chief way in which you're answering questions. I don't know. We have this initiative free of cost. But then uh, uh, people would ask for money to share all this. This kind of effort. Right. So I, I appreciate that you people appreciate it. Right? Thank you, Bhavani, Astha, Vivek, Amlan, Ashish, Netra, Saurav. Saurav, new one here. Hi, welcome. Saurav, we hold these current affairs sessions from 6 p.m. And all these people, the powerful warriors here, each of them, Vikings in themselves, they answer three questions and then they start this discussion, right? So please participate with us. I will see you all 6 p.m. tomorrow evening, right?
Thank you for participation. I will see you guys tomorrow. Good night.